Hello! In the previous video, we learned that if you have a sinusoidal voltage with a peak voltage of V-peak, then the root mean square voltage is just V-peak divided by root 2. Similarly, if you have a sinusoidal current with peak current value of I-peak, then the RMS current is just I-peak divided by root 2. Let's now go on to talk about power dissipation. Say we have a 1 ohm resistor connected across a 3 volt DC power supply. So the voltage across the resistor will be constant at 3 volt and the power will also be constant at 9 watt. How do we get the 9 watt? Well, we do V square divided by R, right? So 3 volt square divided by 1 ohm. So that's where the constant 9 watt power comes from. Now, what if we connect it across a AC power supply? with a peak voltage of 3 volts. So the voltage across the resistor will not be constant. It will be varying sinusoidally with time. And because of that, the power will also not be constant. It will also be varying sinusoidally between the value of 0 watt and 9 watt. So the peak power dissipation is 9 watt coming from the peak voltage of 3 square divided by 1 ohm. And this peak power occurs only at these two time instants here. But because of the sinusoidal waveform, it's obvious that the average power dissipation is 4.5 watt, right at the middle between 0 watt and 9 watt. So the average power dissipation is actually half of the peak power dissipation. And that's a very convenient coincidence. So in general, if you apply an AC voltage with peak voltage of V-peak across a resistor R, then the peak power dissipation is V peak square divided by R. But the average power dissipation is half the peak power dissipation. So let's write it down here. Peak power is V peak square divided by R. Whereas average power is half of the peak power dissipation. Now let's try to rearrange the terms a bit and see whether anything good comes out of it. So let's pack V peak square and 2 together. Can you see that these two are the same? I've just packed V P square divided by 2 together and then I pull up the square. Now look at what's inside the bracket here. Does it look familiar to you? V peak divided by root 2. Isn't it just the root mean square voltage? Aha! Uh -huh. So the average power dissipation is simply the root mean square voltage square divided by R. So do you have an idea now why we are interested in the root mean square value? Because if you use the peak voltage, you end up calculating the peak power. But most of the time, we are more interested in the average power dissipation, which can be calculated using the root mean square voltages. And the same logic can be applied to the I square R formula. So if you use the peak current value, you end up with the peak power dissipation. But if you use the root mean square current value, then you get average power dissipation. The same applies to the VI formula. V peak times I peak gives you the peak power dissipation, whereas root mean square V times root mean square I gives you the average power dissipation. That's why we love RMS values. So can you see how useful the root mean square values are? And that's why when specifying AC voltages, we will rather use their root mean square values rather than the peak values. For example, an AC power supply with 3 volts peak voltage gives you only half the average power dissipation compared to a DC 3 volts power supply. So these 3 volts here kind of gives us a wrong idea of how much power this AC power supply can provide, right? For this reason, we often prefer to specify AC power supplies using their root mean square voltages instead. So the RMS value for a 3 volt peak is of course a 2.12 volt. So instead of specifying a peak voltage of 3 volts, we will rather specify the RMS voltage of 2.12 volt. Because we can then compare it to a 2.12 volt DC power supply, which provides the exact same average power. And now you should understand why some people say that the RMS voltage is the equivalent DC voltage that provides the same power dissipation. Alright, that's all. Ta-ta!